Oh, China, you never cease to surprise us with your complete lack of understanding of what you're making, and in particular, other countries' electrical standards. Take, for instance, this bayonet cap to small Edison screw lamp adapter. You do win points for the fact that you can't touch the metalwork down here, but that's all the points you're getting because in the UK, as opposed to the American and other country Edison screw lamp holders, in the UK and India and other countries, we have the bayonet cap lamp holder. This has a metal surround with two pins in the end, and the two pins in the end should not in any way be connected to this metal. This metal should be fairly isolated to the point that when you put it into certain grounded metal fixtures, like chandeliers, then this metalwork here will actually be grounded. Now, this is where things go wrong. Let me unplug this lamp holder before I go any further. Because it turns out with this lamp holder, and that one, that there's a bit of electrical issue. Because if I go onto the outer casing and I touch the contacts, this one has a direct electrical connection to the outer metal casing. And that is unfortunate, because in a traditional plastic lamp holder, when you put it in, that does stick out and is touchable. And because it's not polarised in any particular way, Depending on which way you put it in, that will either be connected to neutral and be effectively at zero volts with reference to ground, or it will be at 240 volts with reference to ground, which could get quite spicy if you were trying to unplug a lamp. Now, why has this happened? Well, it turns out that they've used a very simple system that is, well, in their eyes, compatible with Edison screw and bayonet cap. It has this arrangement where if it was Edison screw, it has one wire at the back that goes to the back pin, and then the side of the lamp housing with this metal tab connects onto the metal housing of the Edison screw lamp holder. But unfortunately, they use the same thing with the bayonet cap lamp holder, but they've added an extra wire onto that and they've put it in, but they've crimped it again with that little contact, the little brass contact here crimped against the side of the housing. So by default, the housing will always be referenced to one of these pins. Now, to be fair, occasionally you get a British lamp. This one came from Asda. It's clearly marked Earthfault because it, I was demonstrating how bright this new Asda lamp was to my brother when it tripped all the power out to the house because it tripped the RCD. Uh, and this one does. Well, let me demonstrate. This one does have an electrical connection to the pins. If I do this, nope, it's not that direction. So it's clearly through the rectifier, so it's on the circuit board. The circuit board is making contact with the case at some point, and this does trip the circuit breaker. And when you actually put one of these lamp holders, one of these faulty fixtures in, and they're all like this as far as I can see, when you put it into a standard bayonet cap lamp holder, if it's the conventional plastic one like this, all that will happen is that metal will either be live or at sort of neutral. But if you put it into the metal chandelier, it will either connect neutral to earth, which is a, a bit of a random thing with RCDs or GFCIs. It means that above a certain load, you'll get tripping problems. Or it will do live to earth, which will instantly result in the power tripping. Usually the RCD trips first or the GFCI. Uh, so that's quite a novel thing. So, big round of applause to eBay and Amazon and the other sort of online sellers for facilitating the importing of stuff that does not in any way get tested for compliance with local standards and just floods onto the market, as so much stuff does. A splendid result, I have to say. So, um, yes, that caught me out when I plugged it in and it tripped the breaker. And then I was thinking, but surely it's not affecting them all. And, well, yes... It does appear to be affecting them all.